the grandson of right thought. Welcome to the School of the Marvelous Light. I'm going to be reading from the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, chapter 1. And we're going to read about why this word of truth is hidden to the world. Though it is something that's very simple and it's easy to grasp, just like Christ said when he said, my yoke is easy and light. It's not hard to carry. It's not hard to bear. The world is blind to it and deaf to it. And we're going to read here in Corinthians why that's the case. First Corinthians chapter 1, starting at verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. So first of all, you see two groups, them that perish and us which are saved. So obviously there's a destruction coming upon the earth. There's a death coming upon the earth. And in that death and rebirth, there are some who will be saved for the rebirth. In other words, they will be born again. And there, will, and there are some who will be destroyed. And those ones who are to be destroyed, this preaching of Christ to them is foolishness. You see? For it is written, verse 19, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? And after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So just as I was saying, it's hidden from the world, this word of truth. But to them which are to be saved and receive mercy, as it is written, there are vessels of destruction and vessels of mercy. So this destruction, there will be some who will be given mercy to be pulled out of great destruction, you see? To be saved, as he said. The great destruction is what's going to happen within you when your thoughts and your feelings change. You're there, that's a world that builds up your thoughts and your feelings. Well, that based on fear will end in death because the wages of sin is death. And so when this death that I'm describing to you comes upon the earth to pay everyone, some will receive it and others, they will say, well, death, where is your sting? <laughs> and that's the, those who believe that I'm describing here. They will find this word of truth. In other words, they will hear that voice of one crying in the wilderness. You see? Not in the, the midst of Egypt with all the rigmarole that's going on. You won't hear the voice there. You think that it's going to come that way, and that's the error. That's the wisdom of this world that Abba has destroyed. If you hear what that verse is saying, it's telling you that the wisdom that you're searching for is hidden in places that you wouldn't expect it to be hidden. He has chosen vessels you wouldn't have expected him to choose to bring forth this word of truth. And so they don't, they don't appear the way you would think they would. Why? Because that shows man's error in judgment. And we're going to read about that as we continue. He says, verse 22, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Now, what does that mean? The Jews are those who worship outward appearance. You understand that? That's what a Jew there means. One who worships outward appearance, who outwardly looks righteous, just like Christ described them. That's what a Jew is. He wears the robe with the extra fringes and the extra thick border and 
got the scroll tucked under their arm, walking and washing their hands up to the elbows, doing outward signs to see. You see, it's about the eyes. That word Jews is about the eyes. To appear a certain way. He says, to them, they're looking for a sign, see? So they expect the truth of Christ to appear a certain type of way, and they look for a sign to show me that you're from God. And it's the word that's the sign that they're sent from God. Just as it was with Christ. The truth bears witness that I'm from God, or I could not tell you no truth. Whoever it was that told me to tell you this, if the words are true, has to be true. The source. You see what I'm saying? A liar can't tell me to tell you true words. Doesn't work that way. You are who your father is. You see? And the Greeks seek after wisdom. Now, what does that part mean? The Greeks are those who worship how it sounds. So they will only hear what they believe is truth based off how it sounds. In other words, how eloquent it's spoken. The fanciful words and elaborate language that's used to decorate and express and all of this. That's what they listen to to believe something is true or not. Well, it must be true. Look how well spoken that person is. The Jews are saying, well, look, it must be true because look at how well dressed the person is. Do you see what I'm saying there? That's why neither one of them can hear the truth. They can't grasp it because they're judging wrong. Now, what does the scripture say is wrong judgment? Well, if you've been coming to the school of marvelous light, you know very well what it is. It's judging by what you see and judging by what you hear. You see, we're going to get some proof on that after we finish what we're doing here. Verse 23. But we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews, a stumbling block. Now that you know what it means when it says Jews, why are they stumbling before we continue? Because what I'm describing to you is something that you have to do within yourself. Just like Christ described when he said the kingdom of heaven is within you. And he had all with the Jews and the Pharisees, you see. And they kept saying, show us a sign that you be from God. See what I'm saying? If it doesn't come with any outward show, then they don't believe it's true. So there must be some sign that, that what you're saying is true. The word is the sign that it's true. <laughs> it's a sign that it's an actual true thing. It's the word, you see? And what I'm telling you is something that must be done within yourself. I speak about the thoughts and the feelings in that world within yourself, the kingdom of heaven. And how to sit upon the throne of your heart and to watch the gate and to watch the thoughts and the feelings that are coming in and out of your mind and out of your heart. That's what I'm speaking to you of, where there's no sign to show that event because it's done within. It's done in secret, what I'm describing. So to them, it's foolishness. I need to see something to prove what you're saying is true. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And unto the Greeks... It is foolishness. So now I've let you know what it means when it says Greeks. Somebody who, how it sounds. See, it sounds foolish what you're describing to me don't sound right. You're telling me that in order to have the desire of my heart, I must feel as though I have it. Even though I don't, I must feel as though I do and walk as though I do. And then I'll have it. That sounds foolish. That sounds foolish. You're telling me to be happy and I don't even have the thing. Yeah, but you would be happy if you had it. So that's the feeling you got to feel. That's foolishness. Don't sound right. Sounds stupid. See? And it's not eloquent speech that the person who's giving it to you is not talking eloquently because there was a prophet who God chose and made him as God. In other words, made him one with himself. And that prophet said, I don't speak with eloquent speech and speak all good with a good tongue and all that stuff. And God said, that's why I chose you. Because I made man's mouth and I know what it can do. So do you see it's the same thing he's saying here? They're looking for some eloquence of speech, but it's foolishness to them when they hear the truth coming out. But unto them which are called, 
both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, listen, not many mighty, not many noble are called. He says, now you see even in your fleshly life, when you finally hear the truth, it's coming out of a source that is very humble, unknown, uh, plain. You're like, huh? But they're speaking the truth. I can't deny the power that's coming out. I thought it would be some, some big name preacher with a big congregation that would have this type of truth coming out. No. You see? That's why he says, not many mighty. See, after the flesh, rich men, big... Uh, names in the world, big reputation. Not many of them are called. He says, and not many noble, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world. Now, if you hear because you are hearing the truth coming from this source, well, then that means that God has chosen what the world hates, which is the so-called Negro man. He's hated by the world. He's been made a slave. His name has been changed. He's been cut out of his own land. He's been cast aside and hated, never given back anything that was taken from him, never made amends for all of the pain and suffering that he suffered. That's what God has chosen. Do the world hate black people? They always have. You see, they always have. But this is where the truth happens to be coming out of. Some dude in a basement in the city of Detroit Bouncing from place to place, living on faith every day is the where this truth is coming out of. Because God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world. I have chosen thee, Israel. Not because you were more in number, for you were the fewest of people. But because Abba hath loved thee, he would keep the oath that he hath sworn to your fathers. So the, the most smushed down to the bottom base people on the earth, well, that would be a people that has no name, don't know who their master is, don't know where their original land is, don't know where they came from, don't know nothing. Being told to them everything that they are. That would be base people on the earth. Well, in other words, the last. Well, they should be first according to scripture. And now you can see why, because they got the truth. You see, or else you wouldn't be here listening to nothing I have to say. I can't feed you nothing. I can't enlighten you on nothing. But if I have fed your spirit and uplifted you in spirit, then what do that mean? How am I able to do such a thing? The word is how. Because the word is with God and the word was God. Oh, boy. But it don't look like you expect it to look because Abba has chose the weak things. Now, what does man choose? He chose the mighty things. See? See how your judgment is different than Abba's judgment? He says the base things of the world and things which are despised. Abba hath chosen you. <laughs> Y'all hear that? And things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Told you, I talk about the place, the secret place where things get done at. Because out of the heart come the issues of life. Not the issues of life come into the heart, then you start feeling things based on what you saw. That ain't what it say. It say you feel things and then it come out and show itself to you. Now that's just a truth. So if you're wise, you'll hear that and say, so if I feel joyful things, then I will have a joyful experience. Doesn't matter what it currently looked like, it will conform to my image. If I feel it, that's right. That's right. Evidence not seen, but it, that's what you're hoping for, ain't it? Well, then that's called faith, then, ain't it? And they can't get around it when you be talking like this. They be like, that's, he's exactly right, but look how he's talking, ain't it? And talking like that. You see what I'm trying to say to you? That ain't no eloquent professor standing up in front of a class with a, a monocle upon his eye and a vest with a... Uh, clock that he's been given from his grandfather passed down to him with a cardigan on and an ascot around his neck and shit. That's not me, man. <laughs> Abba don't care about your fake ass wisdom. That's all outward shit to make you try to look wise, ain't it? 
Because if I was making a movie, wouldn't you make the smart nigga look like that? Because that's what people perceive as a nigga that looks smart. But Abba don't do what looks smart. He picks somebody that is smart. Now, that don't, you can't see how they smart on the inside. <laughs> what you saying, grandson? You can't see what they is on the inside. <laughs> but Abba looks on the heart. Is that what the scripture says in Samuel? That's what it says. Abba looks on the heart of a man. He knows what's inside of a man. So he don't care if he got a monocle on his shit. He don't care if he got a uh, ascot around his neck and all of this. He don't care about that. Abba doesn't, he's not impressed with that. He doesn't look at that and go, ooh, that guy's smart. Let me pick him to put my truth in his mouth. That's not how he does it. He looks at his heart and he says, ooh, I like that. Let me put my words in his mouth. And what is God looking for to see what's in his heart? Love. <laughs> That's all he's looking for. A man after my own heart. Well, what is your heart? Well, the Bible says God is love. So he's looking for a man whose heart loves like his heart does. And then he'll put his spirit upon him. Just like he did David. When Samuel judged wrong. Because he judged by how a man might have looked at a stature. Like God said. Don't look at his stature and his height and everything. One of the brothers might have stepped up there with a big ass booming bass voice and everything. Like, yes, I'm the son of Jesse. Yeah, but you ain't the son God chose. Don't look at his height and his stature and all of that, Samuel. For I have not chosen them, but I rejected them. Oops, I'm judging wrong. I'm judging like a Jew judges. That's right. And if you was judging that big booming ass voice, then you're judging like a Greek judges. See how simple that is. Greeks love how it sounds. They love for a man to go to the microphone and say some eloquent words and don't mess up and stumble over anything and speak in this exotic way and all this other shit. They love to listen and they say, wow, they marvel and they say, what a great orator. It must be true what he's saying. Nope, that's wrong. That's foolishness to judge like that. That's why true judgment is foolishness to you. Now, if y'all heard all them words I just said to y'all and y'all heard the words out that book, then you would know it's the same thing. The same words he's saying is he's just explaining what's in there. In other words, I'm magnifying it and I ain't got no monocle on my eye neither. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Abba do it. He choose the weak things. The, the, a man that don't have no political power. That's what Abba chose. I'm proving it. A man that was considered to be three-fifths of a man. That's what God chose. I'm proving it. A man that was stripped away from his homeland and called a whole nother name. I'm proving it. A man that had a yoke of iron upon his neck. I'm proving it. <laughs> That's what God chose. And because you were offended at what God chose, you're looking for some, something outwardly to show you. Like a hypocrite's cucaracha with a big robe on and a big chain around his neck with a staff he didn't made out of some iron and shit and a crown upon his head and all this other shit. Yes, that really looks like he's really righteous. A Jewish thought. That's a Jew way of thinking. That make a man righteous. Okay, well, how come all of this pedophilia is going on there then? Can you help me understand that? If they're all righteous and pious and everything. What's with all the fondling on the children? Hmm? <laughs> Can you help me understand that? Well, he got a robe on. You just got to just trust people that wear robes. Nope. Nope. It seems like people that wear robes is people that be bought. Judges wear robes too. Can they be bought? See, false judgment. That's what I'm really saying. False judgment can be can be deceived. OK, he says the base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen and things which are not to bring to naught things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Yahushua who of God is made unto wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, 
that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. See that? See that? Now watch what he's going to say next. Watch. Chapter 2, verse 1. And, see, it's a continuing thought. And, just because just this chapter 2 don't mean it's a whole nother day and a whole nother scene. It's the same scene. He said, and I, brethren, when I came to you, listen at this good, came not with excellency of speech, Greeks, see? So did, did Paul come with excellency of speech? Is Paul the one that said, I am rude in speech, but not in knowledge? So if you don't get offended by my, whatever words you guys want to call the way I talk, <laughs> If, you, if you're not offended by that, then you'll get the knowledge that I got given to you because I'm feeding the flock every day if you pay attention. <laughs> I'm feeding them good food every day. Now, whether they think it's good or not, that ain't up to me. I know it is because I know where it comes from. You see? He says, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, Declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Yahushua Hamashiach and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Can y'all hear this today or what? He's telling you clearly. You see what I'm trying to say to you? If somebody's teaching the truth to you, they're not standing up there all trying to speak all eloquent, looking all off into a distant, what a tear about to drip down the corner of his eye and everything while he's saying he's fanciful words. That's not the way it goes. He just keep it real with you. He speak to your heart, heart to heart communication. That's what he's doing. You see? He's not speaking to your, your senses. How does a man speak to your senses? A nice Rolex on his wrist while he's talking to you. That it really is that simple. You understand what I'm saying? Now, now, if you're not enticed by that, then I'll use eloquent words, words that you have to look up in the dictionary and say, "What does that mean?" When grandson said that, I'm doing that to to speak to your intellect and make you go, "Wow, no, that's that guy's deep," because he said supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. He must be so deep and full of wisdom. You see, I ain't doing all that. You see what I'm saying? I'm speaking to your heart. That's what I'm doing. So he says, I ain't speaking with all this fanciful words and all this wisdom. Y'all think is wisdom. He says, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. That's how you know my words is true, because they're full of spirit and power. I'm not hesitating when I'm talking to you. I'm not struggling and, and, and going back and forth trying to make up things to try to connect and all of this. It's just flowing. I'm not editing this video. I'm not cutting it. I never do. I never cutting in scenes. Wait a second. I said something I should have said there. Let me cut that five minutes out. That was kind of dumb. And I, No. Just talking. The spirit is just flowing. And then when I'm done, I'm done. You see? That's how you know. He just said it with the spirit of power. He says that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. See, so that you won't be thinking that somebody's smart because of how they sound. That's why I'm speaking his way in plain words to you. How be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Oh, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. See, princes and stuff, they speak all nice and eloquent and everything, high-born citizens speaking and all this other crap. <laughs> he says, that comes to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom, I told you heart to heart, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. See, we speak the words that prick a person's heart because that's, that's words that are profitable. They cause a change in a person. That's profitable. Not for me to say something that make you stay the same in your intellect and make you stay the same in your feelings. That don't help you none. But to make you say, wait a minute, let me feel better today. Let me fight that good fight of faith. Since my hope is to live in a beautiful place because that's what all our hope is. Don't stop lying. 
talking about you want to live in hell. No, you don't. <laughs> you want to live in a wonderful place. You want to live in the garden. Well, how would you feel if you was living there? You walking on the ground like, <laughs> it's so soft and comfortable. Nothing offends here. <laughs> I can't be scratched by nothing. Nothing pricks my finger or pokes me or hurts me. Wow, you're going to feel great. You're going to feel wonderful. You're going to feel awesome. You're going to rejoice exceedingly. That's what Christ kept telling you to do. And I ain't telling you nothing different. Now, that seems foolish to people that says, why would you rejoice when there are wars and rumors of wars? Because my master already told me that. You ain't telling me nothing. He didn't been told me. See what I mean about how they say we talk? <laughs> you, ain't tell me, you ain't telling me nothing. He ain't been told me. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> and he told me don't fear fear not see cause y'all must think y'all is the citizens and y'all ain't Noah when you know you Noah then what that mean you gonna come through on the other side you gonna flow above the flood don't matter if it's fire because when you know the truth you know you're standing on top of that sea of glass mingled with fire that fire can't touch you because there's a firmament of glass there that you're standing on top of. Now, if you underneath that, I don't know what to say about them people, <laughs> but you just got to know that you're the one walking on top the sea of glass. How come you know that? Because you know that you was the one walking through the Red Sea by faith. And you're going to sing a new song. Well, they're singing a new song on that sea of glass, just like they was when they was walking through the Red Sea. That's because it's going to happen again. When you're in the wilderness, look at how the people in the wilderness look. They look like this. I've been wearing this thing for years on my videos. It doesn't change in the shirt I have on underneath. Y'all know what I got on underneath. It's a blue shirt with no sleeves on it, ain't it? <laughs> let's see. Let's just, let's just really see. <laughs> if that's, I know y'all know that's what I got on underneath here. But let's just make sure. Look at that. Blue shirt with no sleeves on it. Just like we said. You know that's what I got on. Because that's how you look when you're in the wilderness waiting to go across the Red Sea. So you can sing the new song. You're not dressed in a nice Armani suit standing on sand in a hot ass sun. That doesn't make no sense to do that. That's unwise to do that, isn't it? <laughs> it makes sense when you're like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> you in the wilderness. That's why you dress like that. Yeah, that's where he told you don't worry about your clothes wearing out because they won't. I'll take care of you and provide for you. That's where you're at when that's going on. That's where you're at when you're getting fed with the manna. I told y'all how the situation is around here. I don't know if y'all think I'm making that up too. <laughs> I ain't got to make nothing up because I don't have to create no fanciful wisdom to try to appeal to you. I just have to just be truthful. That's all. Does what I'm saying and doing lining up with these words, not just what I said, because Pharisees do that. <laughs> the word of God says this and this law says that and this and that and this and that. OK, yeah, well, it sounds good. But what about what you're doing in your life? Concern with outward appearance and eloquence of words, trying to appeal to Greeks and Jews. That's what you're more concerned with. And when you look around, you'll see it, brothers. Now that you know that trinket of knowledge that I just told you, which is the Jews and the Greeks means people that judge with their eyes, Jews, people that judge with their ears, Greeks. That's what it means. Not a race. <laughs> see that? See how that born again wisdom and knowledge come from a humble place? <laughs> you see? He says that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. You see that? But as it is written, uh, yeah, but as it is written, verse nine of chapter two, eyes have not seen nor ear heard. So he's talking about the eyes and the ears. See what I'm saying to you? Neither have entered into the heart of man. 
the things which El hath prepared for them that love him, but to El hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of El. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of El knoweth no man but the spirit of El. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of El, that we might know the things which are freely given to us of El. See? You see that? Which things also we speak. Watch this. Watch this. Not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. See that there? So that's not how you're going to hear the truth of God. Doesn't matter if you want it to come like that. That's like going to McDonald's and wanting them to give you a Whopper. McDonald's got Big Macs, man. So ask for a Big Mac if you go to McDonald's. Don't ask for no Whopper. You got to go to Burger King to get a Whopper. Same thing with this truth. You want nice eloquence and nice fancy suits and everything? There's many false prophets out there that you can go to that will give you that. Believe me. But you can't expect to get the truth from them. Because they're appealing to eyes and ears. That's all they're doing. They're not appealing to the heart and to the truth of the matter. You see? He says, the only way you can know the heart is to get the spirit of God. And God has only given it to humble, low, base, weak, foolish things. Mm, 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 mm. Did you know that? He says, now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of El, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of El. See, that we might know. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. See that there? But he that is natural, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit. Just like I've been saying in my videos. See? The natural man, the man that judges with his eyes and his ears, he can't receive spiritual things. The things that I'm speaking of, which are your thoughts and your feelings, the internal world. He can't hear that. Neither can he know them. Let me go back. The things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. See? Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So the words that I'm telling you to you, the only way you know they're true is your spirit bears witness that they are true. So if you don't have the spirit of God, then you just walk away from me. And you say, this guy's talking nonsense. You see? But he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. See, he can't be judged for the eyes and the ears because they're saying what he's saying is true. I can't condemn the truth that is in him. I can only talk about either how he looks or how he sounds. Come on. And it's just true because I've endured it my whole time I've been preaching. Somebody tells me what I'm saying is not true because of either the way I'm saying it and how it sounds or how I look. That's all they can ever talk about. They can't say, you're just lying, grandson. I'd be like, tell me when I'm lying. They'd be like, but you're not. So why are you talking about my nose ring? Because God, because God says don't do that. If that was true, then how come the words in my mouth? Uh-huh. God says don't get tattoos. If that's true, then how come the words in my mouth? Because God don't judge like the way you judge. He judged the heart of the man. <sighs> Boy, 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 boy. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. See? So if you have the mind of Christ, then aren't you one with him? That's what I'm trying to explain to you. Now, if you're one with him, what form do you have? The form of a servant. The form of a servant and not some guy looking like he's all been pristined over by people and having servants tending to him and dabbing him with the cotton balls and putting makeup all on his face and making sure before he gets in front of the camera, giving him notes and all this other shit. That's not the way it working. The form of a servant, lowly, meek, humble. That's the form you're going to take. You see? All right. Now, before we end this, because we're getting kind of long into this message, 
I told y'all I was going to give y'all the proof on judgment. Okay. So let's, let's go back and get that. All right, 1 Samuel, chapter 16. 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Now, he didn't say which son. He just said, I got a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do, and thou shalt anoint unto me he whom I name unto thee. You hear that? Now we want to get to when he got there. All right. Verse 6. And it came to pass when they were come, Jesse and his sons came to Samuel, that he looked on Eliab, that's Jesse's son, and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. It said he did what to Eliab? He looked upon him. <laughs> so when he saw him with his eyes, Jew, when he saw him with his eyes, he said, oh man, that's got to be him. Surely, see, without a doubt. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man sees, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Case closed. Case closed. He told you how man judges, and then he tells you that that's wrong to judge that way. And then he tells you how God judges. So how should you judge if you want a friend? You're telling me you're going to judge your friends based on outward appearance. Well, if you look in your life, you'll know you've done it. And you know that they weren't true friends neither. But wouldn't it be wise to choose your friend based on their heart? Well, then you'd be judging like God does if you did that because that's what he said. What about your wife? If you judge her on outward appearance, you can get a dud, can't you? But if you judge her based on her heart, then you're getting her based on the truth of who she is. When people say they didn't see the red flags, what they're saying is they denied the heart of the matter and they looked on the surface of the matter. That's all it means. They judge wrong judgment, just like we read here. All right. Man looketh on outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Okay, then. And we know the rest of the story. Now, let's get one more. Let's get one more little quick little proof about judgment and how man been doing it. Because why does man say, oh, that's the truth coming out that vessel? Because the man's talking in a certain way that makes you feel this way. And he has a certain garment on that looks all pretty and sparkly. And so you're saying, oh, it must be. The guy must be true. Well, then you're doing what God says. Man does it. Man does an error. You see that? Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now, what did I say about the Spirit of the Lord resting upon him? When his heart is like God's heart, then God will put his spirit. God chose David because of his heart. God told you that right there in Samuel. That's why we read it. Now, we're going to see. If you have the Spirit today, it's because of the status of your heart. Let's see. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord and shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. So he's not going to be a Jew or a Greek, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. 
So he told you he's not going to judge like a man judges this branch from the, from the stem of Jesse. So we just got the proof there. And then it said the spirit was upon him. Yes, because that's where the spirit is on a pure hearted person. It's what God chooses. He doesn't choose somebody whose heart isn't after his own and call them his son because a man would only raise a son in his own image. He's not going to raise his son in somebody else's image. And if he does do that, then something's wrong with that guy. Wouldn't you say? <laughs> so now, don't judge by what you see when it comes to the truth. Judge the heart of the matter like father does so that you can be judging righteous judgment today. So I'm Israel out.